Good morning, class. How are you doing today? Hope you are fine and healthy. Today we're going to continue our lessons in Unit 5.7, page 76. For the past three weeks, we've been studying about saddles and light. Well, I'm happy to tell you that today will be the last day of our chapter for studying saddles and light. Today we're going to study about measuring lights. So what is measuring lights? Can you tell me? We know that the word measuring means to measure something to see how long it is or how wide it is, right? But how do we measure light? How do we know the brightness in a room or how light travels or how long does light uh, take from one end of, of, of time to reach another end of time? Well, we're going to find that out today. So, can you please take out your book and turn to page 78? Have my mark. On page 78, it's entitled, How Scientists Measure and Understand Light. So, we're going to, together, going to learn the technique on how scientists measure and understand light. I will read the first paragraph with you. If you want, you can also read it with me, okay? Let's begin. For hundreds of years, scientists have tried to explain and understand the things that they observe about light. So, for hundreds of years, scientists, you know what a scientist is? Scientists is people that who study and investigate certain things, right? Okay, for hundreds of years, scientists have learned about or studied about light and how light travels and how fast it travels. Um, one scientist would have an idea about light and another scientist would collect new evidence and change the idea. So for hundreds and even thousands of years, when one scientist discovers something about light, then later on another scientist also proved that their uh, study was wrong but theirs was right. So they keep on going and going until finally we will learn about it all. One scientist about 200 years ago discovered the real facts about light, of how fast it travels, and how many colors does light transmit. We've also learned about that. Okay, I have some words here that I wrote on the board that will help you do your reading and will also help you in your understanding for today's lessons. The word, first word is prism. Prism. The second word, refractions. Refractions. And the last word is rainbow. You all know what a rainbow is, right? Yes, you better know what a rainbow is. What is the rainbow? Please post, post a picture of a rainbow on a telegram post so I will understand or I will know that you know what a rainbow is. Okay, now back to our first word, a prism. What is a prism? Can some of you guess what a prism is or what does a prism do for a science or a scientist? Well, I have some pictures here and you can see it. Again, I will upload these pictures on our Telegram post so you will have a better view. This here is a prism. A prism is a triangular object or a pyramid object in the shape of a glass. Where you can use it to detect and see how light travel and what color light is. As you can see here, we have an example of a prism and light is coming through one way and it omits I mean, it projects out the colors of the ray of light. And the color of the ray of light is the same thing of how a rainbow is formed out in nature. Is that correct? Right, okay, so the accents when white light comes in and the color light goes out is called a refraction. A refraction is light, when light is deflected through a medium. A medium is the object. So when light is refracted through the prism, to the glass objects, it will project out the color of the light, which is the color of the rainbow, right? Yes, so a refraction means when light is deflected through a medium. A medium means a pyramid or a glass or any other things. A medium is the stuff or the things that we use. And I have here is a definition of a prism. If you want to know the real definition term of a prism, I will read it for you. 
A prism is a solid geometric figure whose two ends are similar, equal, and parallel with rectangular figures and whose sides are parallelograms. So that means it is shaped like a pyramid with a glass figures on the side. Also, you can also see in your pictures, in your book on page 79, it talks about how light refracts off the image and shows the rainbow. Through your exercise later on in task 1 and task 2, we will discuss more about how the rainbow is formed, how light is reflect, refracted through a prism and observed through the rainbow. Okay, continue on with our reading. Rainbows on page 78. You already uploaded some pictures of a rainbow for me. I see that you understand what the rainbow is. So let me ask you this question. How do you say rainbow in Khmer? You can post something up on our Telegram post with a voice message. Tell me what is the rainbow in Khmer because I have no clue what it is. So you can tell the teacher or teach the teacher how to say rainbow in Khmer in our Telegram post. Okay, now on to our page 79 in your book. On page 79, I have a brief story about how scientists study and measure light, which is on our turn. And they talked about over 950 years ago, just one first scientist from China. That scientist was intrigued by how light from the sun touches the earth. So he did a study about sun, the sunlight and how the rainbow affects the earth. I want you to read page 79, understand how he did his studies, and went over to three other scientists. Scientist Isaac Newton, have you ever heard of him? And also, there's another scientist on here where he studied the light, but on his facts was the main fact that we are studying about light now. I want you to read about the Chinese scientist and Isaac Newton how this study of light touches us or gives us the understanding of light today. And after you read your text on page 79, I want you to answer these questions. This will be your first task. So for your first task in your learner's book, I want you to answer these three questions on page 79. The first question is a reader for you. Name two scientists who thought that rainbow was caused by its reflections or refractions. And then two, and the second question is, what did Newton use to obtain new evidence about how rainbow forms? Again, when you answer these questions, I want you to answer it in a complete sentence, okay? Don't just give me a yes or no answer. Explain why Newton's investigation about light affects us today. And the second question for task one. Now in your workbook, in your workbook, I want you to, to answer the question on page 44 and 45. Again, on page 44 and 45, I have some more reading about prisons and how we measure lights. I will explain to you more of this on our second video, but for this task, I want you to read it and do the question and we will discuss about measuring light on our Telegram post or we can go to Zoom and we can have more discussions on here. Okay? For this first task, you will have 40 minutes to complete your task. Once you complete your task, please send it to our, well, we can send it out to our personal telegram group so all your classmates can see you, right? So they will know that you did your assignments and exercise. Remember, no two answers can be the same, because every answer is your own answers. Okay, class, see you in our second video. Hello class, welcome back to our second video for today's lessons. So how did you enjoy learning about light? And how did you understand on the way that scientists measure light? Some of you have posted up some real good example of how you measure light, but most of you just copy the text from the book. So now let's do a little explaining on how Isaac Newton measure light. Can you please turn your book to page 79 and we will discuss page 79 together. Okay, on page 79, I'm going to read the first two paragraphs. If you want, you can also read with me 
And after our meeting, we will do a brief discussion about Isaiah Newton. Okay, starting from the second paragraph on page 79. Can you join me? The English science, scientist Isaac Newton was the first to explain the rainbow accurately. About 300 years ago, he saw that sunlight, also called white light, is made up of different colors. Our eyes don't see colors separately. Newton used a prism, which is this object here, to demonstrate that white light is a mix of colors. When sunlight passes through a prism, it bends. This is called the refractions. Remember we talked about the refraction, our light is deflected through the medium. The angle of bending is different from the various colors of light. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. In a rainbow, every raindrop acts as a tiny prism. The sun shines through the rainbow, then it raindrops and light is refracted, giving a rainbow. Okay, how do you understand those three paragraphs? So in Isaac Newton's study about light, light as we see it today, you look up in the sky, it is white light, right? You can't see the rainbow colors. But if it went through a prism, a glass, and it refracted the white light, refracted out through the prism, you will see all the colors of the light, right? Just like the example of a rainbow. How is rainbow is formed? When it's raining outside or mist outside, and each throughout uh, through Isaac Newton's uh, scientific studies, he said, through each raindrop. Each raindrop in the sky, it acts like a prism. So every raindrop that, that falls and drops in the sky, when the sunlight hit the raindrop, it acts like a prism. So it projects all the colors of light. That is what Isaac Newton's study was about. And it has shown that his study was accurate and his study was a fact. Because light itself is not white light. It, it refracted through a prism. A prism can be, as he studied, the raindrop or a magnetic material like this pyramid or a glass, a 3D object. So thank you for submitting some of your first tasks on how the measurement of light was taken place by Isaac Newton, even from the, the Chinese scientist, Sang Ko. Okay, now on to your second task for this video. The second task, I want you to answer the questions in your challenge book on page 48 and 49. I have mine marked. Let me see if I can find the page. 48 and 49. 48 and 49 have more reading about how scientists measure light and how it bends when it goes through a prism or how light bends when it forms a rainbow. That's how we see the colors of the rainbow. Because if there was no rain in the sky, we would just see bright white light. Is that correct? Okay, for your second task, I want you to read page 48 and answer the two questions about how this scientist studied light. And also I want you to read page 49 and answer the four or five questions on there and how this scientist have studied about light. And at the end of your reading, it will ask you if this scientist did his study correctly or was it incorrect? Meaning, was it proven fact, was it proven true, or was it untrue? Okay, you will be given another 40 minutes to complete this task. Once you complete this task, you can post it up on our Telegram post. Because remember, no two answers can be the same. So each one of your answers should be different from a classmate, right? Okay class, see you on our third video. Hello, welcome back to our third and final video for today's lessons. So how did you enjoy learning about light, especially the scientific form about measuring lights? I see throughout your first class and your second class, you really enjoyed studying about Isaac Newton and on his theories of studying lights, on how white lights can turn into a rainbow. And 
for some of your discussion with me, I see you have many ways of explaining how a rainbow is formed. But you understand that a rainbow is formed through a prism and how it light refracts through the prism and gives us the colors of the rainbows. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and sharing your ideas about how light and how rainbow is formed with me. Okay, well now on to your homework. Your homework is in your letters book on page 80 and 81. You can see here, page 80 and 81. But, on page, the work on page 80 and 81 is an overview of Unit 5. So this is the last page on Unit 5. So, to answer your homework, you have to review all of the units from Unit 5. So that means you have to review the past three or four weeks of our study lessons, of our homework, and of maybe of our videos. But most importantly, you will overview the whole Unit 5 book starting from page 70, no, 66. Starting from page 66 all the way to page 80. You will have to review all that and answer the questions on page 80 and 81. Because your homework is the end of Unit 5 about shadows and light. We have discussed many subjects and many titles about satellite, about creating the puppet shows, to how satellite is formed and which direction lights travel. And now we are at the end of learning how to measure lights. And I see that you have come to good conclusions on measuring lights. Okay, again, this is your homework. You will have one whole week to submit me your homework. Remember class, it is important to turn in your homework and turn in your assignments to me because our term is almost coming up to an end and you will have midterms. And all your homework scores and your assignment scores will be a part of your total score. So it is important to set in your task, okay? Okay, class, until we see each other again next week, be safe, stay healthy, and goodbye.